Yeah, I'm a Karo. My language for a lot of strangers. Um, I find the need to revisit that whole thing about uh, defining sovereignty. Um, clearly, there's a lot of people now um, want to get their head names and headlines and historical papers, um, which is, will be their legacy, um, right or wrong, about entering into treaties uh, with governments. I did a previous video warning people of um, the issues around treaty making. I have had a quick browse at some of the proposed treaty formulas that are being used uh, by states and territories and unfortunately they're not treaties, they are not proper treaties. They are in fact um, compacts or contracts or mem basically a high rating uh, memorandum of understanding. Um, treaties is, is much more uh, in depth in terms of your sovereignty, um, what it is that you want in terms of self-governance, self-management, um, self-determination, economic, uh, economic development uh, for you, your communities, um, educational programs, um, social reforms, uh, historical grievances being dealt with by way of compensation and restitution. Um, all of these things are a part and parcel. And then of course, then there's the integration of laws in terms of whether you want your law to be applicable to your communities or whether you want the white law to be the sole uh, law um, institution uh, that governs your communities. Then there's the question of where does the courts fit in the European courts? Do they govern your communities? Are they the ones who make decisions? Or do you have a joint sitting of, you know, of your elders who are law people who sit on those councils and, and do those things with you. Then there's the transference of laws. What are you giving up in return for what it is that they're giving you? Are you surrendering your land and any claim over your land, any claim to compensation, any claim to mining uh, royalties, etc. Um, in the future, or are you, you know, just taking what they give you now? Um, these are some of the issues that, you know, that, that spin in my head. Of course, I've not been part of any of those discussions, so therefore I, I can't make any comment. But uh, what I do know is that when people say to me, like for example, the Nungas, the Nungas in South Australia have signed a treaty with the South Australian government, um, no doubt um, they know what they're doing. It's for their mob only. Um, we, and the same as I understand, they're doing something up in the Northern Territory right now um, with the Northern Land Council. So. Who's the Northern Land Council truly representing? Are they representing themselves? Because they're a statutory body set up by, by an act of parliament in Canberra. And so those elders and those administrators within there are basically administering an, um, a, a law that's, that, that's owned by the Commonwealth of Australia. And um, so what powers and jurisdiction do they have to negotiate a treaty? Um, and I guess, I, I guess, you know, that's their decisions, but um, my concern is that, you know, treaty making is a much greater thing. It's, it's you know, it's much more uh, serious and there's a lot more, a lot of finite details of issues um, that have to be um, agreed to one way or the other. Whether you, and so, I don't know. It's, you know, to 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 say that the state or Commonwealth government is going to give you a package of money that you can deal with and you can spend however you want, um, um, which I doubt very, you know, I doubt very much that they would they would do that um, because I think that um, if they're going to give you millions of dollars over a period of time, then I think they certainly would want some sort of outcome from it um, that serves their purpose and uh, they are able to measure sort of. Uh, measurable outcomes in terms of your assimilation into white Australia. And um, treaties are basically an assimilation process. 
when you sign treaties, you are assimilating the laws into one and you're agreeing to become part of, of each other's uh, world. And, and so you've got to look at the balance here. Are you talking from an equal position playing field or are you talking from a subordinate playing field hoping to get something? So I guess that's the only outcome that one could expect um, to achieve is that um, they're the dominant force. They're not talking to you as equals. They're talking to you as, as the governing power. And so you're in a position then to, um, to, to, well, you're not in a position, sorry, you're not in a position to argue to the contrary. And so um, your, your negotiation framework is very restricted to their agenda, to setting those agendas that they have. Um, that's, that's one of the concerns that I have, because there is a much broader field of issues that must be dealt with in, with, with proper uh, treaties. So I dare say that, you know, if the UN and, and other, other international human rights organs and other bodies look at these agreements that are being entered into around Australia, I, I can assure you that they would sit there and shake their heads and say, how can the people be duped into something like this here, you know? Um, and I, I just hope that egos don't play a role here in um, someone saying, well, I want to leave a legacy, you know, for the efforts that I put into Aboriginal affairs. Your legacy can be, one of the, the greatest legacy you can leave behind is making sure it's done right for you and your kids and the future generations not for the sake of just getting your name on a piece of paper and saying, I was there, I did it, and, you know, this is one of the legacy I left behind. Because I think your grandkids and great-grandkids are going to look at it, you know, in a very different light when they realise what was given up and what was lost at that time, because there was an opportunity here. And, you know, people say, well, we can play hardball and get nothing. <laughs> well, we have nothing now anyway, so you're not going to lose anything. Um, and that's, that's what needs to be looked at here. The other important factor about all of this as well is that if you got people in different parts of Australia entering into treaties um, and not really knowing the treaty-making process and all of the issues and the rights that you're entitled to that surround that as when you say you're a sovereign people, you've never been conquered, you've never ceded, well then right now you're giving it away you're acquiescing um, without really truly understanding what it is that you're doing. And all you do, you know, if people are just looking at, at financial and, and material outcomes, then you've got to rethink what you're doing. Um, I applaud the initiative. I think it's, I think it's absolutely well overdue. Don't get me wrong. Um, it is overdue. But we've got to talk from a position of, um, of, of equal standing. We can't tr talk from a position of, uh, of being subordinate. So there, there's got to be equity here. And uh, so you're talking as a sovereign people to, a, to an imposing, occupying power who's occupying your land. So you are the authority. You, that's your country. That's everything that's in that country is yours. They're occupying it, and they admit to that occupation. So as an occupying power, they're the ones down here because they've never defeated you in war. If they defeated you in war, well, then they'd be up here and they'd have all the rights. They call it the spoils of war. But that, didn't, that hasn't happened. So as far as I'm concerned, we are here as a superior force, uh, superior power. They are here. They're an occupying power here by force of arms and by sheer weight of numbers. But we have equal standing as sovereign peoples. Mm -hmm.